Well, I completely forgot this happened. Oh, the uh, the PS5 announcement? Yes. Uh, I you put the story in. I tried to read through it. It's very long. It's... Okay, so basically what happened was Wired did an exclusive uh, interview with PlayStation yesterday about the PlayStation 5. And the, the big thing was that they confirmed that it was going to be called the PlayStation 5 and that it was coming out uh, holiday 2020. So it's it's confirmed that we're getting place. This is the first next gen console that has a has an release official, window, a release window, and an official name. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because before, like, we all called it the PlayStation Five, but it didn't. It was just called the next generation PlayStation system. Now it's officially been called the PlayStation Five. Right. Uh, Sony hasn't said too much about the console since April, when Wired broke the story about development efforts on what on what was then known only as next generation console. In fact, the company hasn't said anything. Sony skipped game show E3 this year, a void during which Microsoft unveiled details about its own next gen console, a successor to the Xbox One, referred to only as Project Scarlet. Like the PS5, Scarlet will boast a CPU based on AMD's Ryzen line and a GPU based on its Navi line. Like the PS5, it will ditch the spinning hard drive for a solid state drive. Now though, in a conference room at Sony's US headquarters, uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan and the system architect Mark Cerny are eager to share specs. Before they do, Cerny wants to clarify something. When we last discussed the forthcoming console, he spoke about its ability to support ray tracing, a technique that can enable complex lighting and sound effects in 3D environments. Given that many questions he's received since, he fears that he may have been amb ambiguous about how the PS5 would accomplish this and confirms that it's not a software level fix, which some had feared. There is ray tracing acceleration in the GPU hardware, which I believe is the statement that people were looking for. Um, a brief, a belief born out of my own Twitter mentions, which, which for a couple of weeks in April made a graphics rendering technique seemed like the only thing the internet had ever cared about. So basically he confirmed that the ray tracing is gonna be baked into the GPU hardware itself, which I'm assuming is better than having it bundled into the software so that it can do more tracing of the rays better. <laughs> ray tracing isn't anything new or crazy. It's it's a lot of like PC games are starting to like use it. I'm trying more. to show it now. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn uses it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how much. I'm trying I'm I'm trying to get the there's a gif that expl Oh, here it is. It's right here. Um Okay, of course. It's got to load every single freaking thing on the yeah. page. It just had it. Oh, it's all the way at the top. There it is. So, ray tracing is basically whatever you see in front of you is rendered and when you move it renders it renders on the fly based on what yeah. you're looking at. So, everything behind you is not rendered. Yeah. Um, and that's what it looks like. So it's the field of vision. Yeah. That, that's what, that's ray tracing. Uh, and this is from Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Uh, every time you move the camera in Horizon Zero Dawn, the game is doing all sorts of under the hood calculations, loading and unloading chunks of world to ensure that it all runs properly. And that's not even counting the robot dinosaurs. Uh, and I should note that this is the engine that, uh, Death Stranding. Is Death Stranding yeah. is going to be on. Yeah, I think because I, I don't think most games support it, but like the ones that do, like, are able to, you know, do what they do in Horizon, mm -hmm. and like they can do it at a much better rate. So I think you know more games are starting to support that. Uh, it says at the bottom, this process, which at this point has become common in open world yeah. games, helps conserve memory, which allows games like Horizon Zero Dawn to show you a whole lot of pretty graphical models at once without sacrificing performance. Game development. It's complicated. Yeah. Um, but that's why I'm like, like I get ray tracing is like this big thing that everybody's like into, but it feels like a buzzword to me because yeah. it's already oh, happened. Yeah, it we definitely already is have a it. buzzword. It's like, it's it's like when the Xbox One launched and they kept, well, the, the One X and they kept talking about teraflops. Yeah. Like that was the buzzword for that. I, I guess what they mean is that they're going to make that better because that's the, what, is going to be the future of gaming. Yeah, like ray, they're they're trying to make it so that ray tracing is easier on this console. Yeah, because it's better than loading the entire world right at once and having things pop up. You know, just loading it when you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
With that in hand, back to the PS5 solid state drive with Cerny first extolled of the way it can turn loading times from a hassle into a blink. It's not just the speed that makes the SSD formidable, he says, but the efficiency it offers. Think about a hard drive in a game console spinning at uh, 5,400 RPM vinyl speed, uh, spinning like a uh, 5,400 RPM vinyl record, sorry. Uh, for the console to read a piece of information off the drive, it first has to send out the disk head like a turntable needle to find it. Each seek has its own, each seek as it's known may entail only a scant handful of milliseconds, but seeks add up. To minimize that, developers will often duplicate certain game assets in order to form co contiguous uh, data blocks, which the drive can uh, read faster. We're, te we're talking common stuff here, like lamp posts and anonymous uh, passerbys. But that pa pause. Yeah, I need to cor I need to correct myself. Okay, the chat was going nuts saying that I, that that is not ray tracing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I'm looking, I looked it up. In computer graphics, ray tracing is a rendering technique for generating an image by tracing the path of light as pixels in an image plane and simulating the effects of its encounters with virtual objects. The technique is capable of producing a very high degree of visual realism, uh, quite higher than that of typical scan line rendering methods. I feel like we've made this mistake before on this show. Probably. We don't... <laughs> We don't do research. But at a greater com computational cost, this makes ray tracing best suited for applications where taking a relatively long time to render a frame can be tolerated, such as in still images and film and television visual effects. Oh. Okay. And more poorly suited for real-time applications such as video games, where speed is critical. Ray tracing is capable of simulating a wide variety of optical effects such as reflection and refraction scattering and dispersion dispersion mm -hmm. phenomena such as chromatic aberration um so it's more about uh the way the light interacts with the environment yes uh I'm going to read the beginning again. Okay. <laughs> Graphics ray tracing is uh, rendering a technique for generating an image by tracing the path of light as pixels in an image plane and simulating the effects of its encounters with virtual objects. So it's a lighting technique, really. Yes. Uh, so it is not what was going on in Horizon Zero yeah. Dawn. That is something completely different. All right. That makes more sense. <laughs> so... Because this this makes a lot more sense now yeah. because it says that uh it's not suited for real-time video games yes but we have high-powered graphics cards that could do this yes and now uh the playstation 5 is gearing to is leaning yes. towards making it more possible on home consoles. yes and i know um the scarlet is gonna have support ray tracing on a hardware level as well mm. so it's gonna be like the big thing next generation ray tracing it better have a big visual effect <laughs> yeah because <laughs> uh usually historically everybody makes a big deal about the hardware of, yeah of new consoles mm -hmm. and if it's like i mean this current generation the big di the there wasn't really like a big jump it yeah. was really just uh it was really just everything looks nicer, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even like that mind-blowing how yeah. nice things looked. I know the PlayStation 4 was all about uh, how many different things you could have on screen at once. There was that. Also, like, because the big thing then with, um, like, the big gimmick wasn't so much graphics. It had become, like, other things. So, like, the PS4 was sharing mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Xbox One, it was at first, you know, like an entertainment center. Then it had to be, like... They had to rethink what their gaming center was going to be. Yeah, that. Yes, I I always attribute this generation to sharing because of the yeah. share button. That was like yeah, the big, that was the big and thing. last generation was uh, HD graphics. I would and, say and online. the internet, yeah, yeah, Xbox Live and stuff yeah. like that. And before that was refining 3D. Yeah. Before that was, was 3D. 3D in general. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Mm -hmm. AJ says, either way, I don't get how this is such a big deal. Big, a new console, because lighting. <laughs> well, I mean, the lighting looks nicer. It's going to help like the way games look and stuff. That, we'll, we'll find out when we see the tech yes. demos. Um, should I keep going? Yes. 
All right. Uh, they keep talking about the SSD. That that's the SSD that's seems gonna, like the, yeah. Uh, they talk about the SSD a lot in this article, so I'm just gonna read this last paragraph. Yeah, yeah. Read the last paragraph. Uh, data adds up. Uh, if you look at the game, a game like Spider Man, uh, Cerny says there are some pieces of data. Uh, duplicated 400 times on the hard drive the ssd sweeps away the need for all of the of the duping uh so not only is it raw raw read speed dramatically faster than a hard drive but it saves crucial space how developers will take advantage of that space will likely differ some may opt to build a larger or more detailed game world others may be content to shrink the size of the games or patches either way physical games for the ps5 will use 100 gigabyte optical discs inserted into an optical drive that also doubles as a 4k blu-ray player the playstation 4 either version the original slim or the pro does not support 4k blu-ray the xbox one s and x do yeah that's crazy that is crazy especially because blu-ray is a sony made yeah that's <laughs> technology that's really dumb so xbox microsoft dropped the ball when the xbox launched correct Sony dropped the ball later in the life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I've been trying to like tell people that because like as of right now, exclusives aside, the Xbox One is a better gaming console because it supports, you know, yes, it supports things like 4K Blu-ray and a whole lot of entertainment suites, but it also has a deep backwards compatibility library. It's got Game Pass, which, you know, opens up the door to so many other games and things. Uh, it had Xbox Live is still the, the king of online gaming in terms of the console space uh and the controller is better so, the controller on the xbox yeah is better um but yeah there's, you know, by then so ssds are uh, ssd that's like, a big deal the, yeah like i said the majority of this article is like about the ssd the next generation consoles are going to need to be ssds yeah uh the nintendo switch has an advantage because it has flash memory yes uh and the memory you put in is flash memory mm -hmm. so it's uh I don't want to say just as fast as SSDs because I don't know that for sure, and somebody's yeah. gonna yell at me. But it sh <laughs> it it technically should be just as fast as an SSD. Yeah. Um, so SSD is is a solid state drive as opposed to what we've had historically uh, flat uh, disc based media. Yeah. So it's like you're listening to a record yeah. and and you gotta rewind it to get the data you want, and then fast yeah. forward it to get the data you want. Whereas on flash storage or solid state, it just goes, here it's it is, there. Give, yeah. give it to me. Um, so that'll make things way faster. And they yeah. say in this article that um, that's essential for being able to uh, process graphics. Yeah. Um, so And both, both consoles are going to have SSDs, the Scarlet and PS5. Yeah, so that's a... That's a technical thing that i can wrap my head around on yeah. being a positive however solid state drives are expensive to get a lot of memory yeah i think they said it was gonna be like 400 gigabytes or something i don't know where yeah. i read that um which isn't a lot considering these next gen games are gonna be really really yeah big. and like a terabyte hard drive like on current gen consoles fills up mighty quickly because you got to install everything right um, they did say that it could be possible on the PS5 to only install like parts of the game. So like you can choose whether you want to install the single player first and then maybe like save the multiplayer for later. Or yeah. Like that. That's cool. I just know I have, I mean, I have 500 gigs on my PS4 right now. Yeah. And that fills up. Yeah. I, I, I upgraded my PS4 to a two terabyte and I have like a one terabyte external for my Xbox One. I'd imagine you can upgrade this too. Yeah. But it's going to be expensive. Right. And there's also different types of SSDs. There's the, like this, the SATA type, which you can easily put in. And then there are those like more like PCI. Type. Yeah. Like in these stupid laptops, yeah. uh, the solid state drives are soldered onto the board. Yeah. So you're not replacing that. Yeah. David Easley says SSDs are flash memory. The only difference is the connection, such as PCIe, just like you're saying. Yeah. Uh, that most singular flash modules aren't capable of. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, because like you have the SATA type, and then you have the PCIe, which are like faster. And then they go on to talk about the controller, which is interesting. Oh, I didn't read that. Yeah. Uh, Cerny hands me the writer a prototype of the next generation controller, an unlabeled matte black doohickey um, that looks an awful lot like the PS4's DualShock Four. After all, after 
After all, there is a hole, there was a hole on it, and a recently published patent points to Sony developing a voice-driven AI assistant for the PlayStation. Because he asked if that was a microphone. Ah. But we don't need that. All he can get from Cerny is, we'll talk more about that another time. Uh, They're not they, ready. they file patents on a regular basis, the spokesperson said. And like many companies, some of those patents end up in other products and some don't. Uh, the controller, which history suggests will be one day be called the DualShock 5, although Cerny has said it doesn't have a name yet, it'll be the DualShock 5, um, <laughs> does have some features Sony was... Uh, Cerny's more interested in acknowledging one is adaptive triggers which can offer varying levels of resistance to make uh, shooting a bow and arrow feel more like the real thing the tension increases as you uh, pull as you pull the arrow back or make a machine gun feel far different from a shotgun so it's saying it that it has resistance it has like, like pushes like, back basically yeah I think the the X Xbox yeah so the Xbox one controller has haptic feedback in the trigger oh but it's like a vibrate yeah, but it, yeah. it functions like the same thing. It can do the same thing. As of now, only the Forza games support that. No other game really takes advantage of it. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a gimmicky thing. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how cool it is. Yeah. But but I, I, I don't see many people using that. I, all, all these extra features are always gimmicks. Yeah. Like, if you have voice a voice feature on there, no one's going to use that. Yeah. It's going to be a gimmick thing. Kojima's going to use it for two seconds. It also boasts uh, haptic feedback far more capable than the rumble motor console gamers are used to with highly programmable uh, voice coil actuators located in the left and right grips of the controller. Combined with an improved speaker on the controller, the haptics can enable some astonishing effects. Uh, first, the writer played through a series of short demos courtesy of the same uh, Japan studio team that designed PSVR's Astrobot Rescue Mission. In the most impressive, uh, the writer ran a character through a platform through a platform level featuring a number of different surfaces, all of which gave distinct and surprisingly immersive tactile experiences. Sand felt slow and sloggy, mud felt uh, mud felt slow and, so and soggy. Um, on ice, a, freak a high frequency response made the thumbsticks really feel like my character was gliding, jumping into a pool. You got the sense of the resistance of water. On a wooden bridge, it was a bouncy sensation. That's so that, interesting. The haptics are basically like uh, creating the feeling like you're actually like walking on ice or. But they're not know, just on the triggers; they're on the thumbs. They're on the thumbs. Yeah, so the haptics are probably like throughout the controller. I'd be down for the thumbsticks to give you some resistance. Do you ever play like an arcade game, like Wave Race, where it yeah. like fights back? Like yeah. it's cool. I like that. So, but here's the thing: because if I don't know if the Xbox One controller is going to have anything like this. And if it doesn't, if you're making multi-platform games, yeah. that's not going to be used up quite a lot. No, developers won't yeah. add special features. But PlayStation exclusive games yes. will yeah, totally I'm sure they'll that. take advantage of that. Uh, AJ says, as long as battery life isn't like... As long as the battery life is like five times the DualShock 4, they let me turn off the dumbass light and also just let me use Xbox controller instead and we're good. Yeah. So the the DualShock 4 has the light. Yes. Which is uh, used for the camera. But it was supposed to be used for the camera, but when they took out the camera... It was just just a light bar. Yeah, and it's stupid. And it was too bright for a lot of people, so they redesigned it yeah. to make it not as light. And they they put a hole in the in the touch bar. So yeah. So you can see it because uh you couldn't really see what color it was because yeah. you don't you're not looking that yeah, way. Yeah, because like it, it's useful for like multiplayer. You can see like you know, you can tell what uh, controller is yours by the color. Right. Um also in Resident Evil 2, uh the color is your health. I like a lot of games do yeah. that. I think Call of Duty it gets red as you get shot. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption, it's just red, oh, the whole time. The whole time, yeah. Uh, it also the DualShock Four has a touch pad that is useless in almost every game. Yeah, uh, that also acts as a button that yeah. ju is just the pause button for a lot of games. It's it's supposed to be like the select button or select. Yeah, yeah. Like so, it brings up the map. Well, it's supposed to be like a like a mouse. Well, tradition. Well, it's supposed to be a mouse, but tr on traditional controllers, you have start and select. Right. Um, or something equivalent, like I think on Xbox, it's start and back. But because they got rid of the start and select buttons on the PS4, they have options, which is your start, and they needed a select, so pressing the thumb. The... Options make sense. Yeah. They got rid of select for the share button. Yeah. 
which a lot of things did now. Yeah. Uh, so they the touchpad ends up being or map. It ends yeah. up being map. Um, what else does it have? The DualShock Four that we don't need. Oh, it has. I've, I like the speaker. The speaker is fine. Yeah. Especially because it's like clear and you can hear everything. I'm like the speaker on the Wii. Yes. <laughs> um, a version of Gran Turismo Sport that Sony had ported over on to a PS5 dev kit. Uh, was played uh, driving on the border driving on the border between the track and the dirt you could feel the surfaces doing the same doing the same thing on the same track using a dual shock 4 on a ps4 the sensation is the cessation disappeared entirely it wasn't the old style rumble feedback it wasn't that the old style rumble feedback paled in comparison it was that there was no feedback at all user tests found that rumble feedback was too tiring too continuously so the release version of GT Sport simply didn't use it. That difference has been a long time coming. Product manager Toshi Aoki says the controller team has been working on haptic feedback since the DualShock 4 was in development. They even could launch it with the PS4 Pro, a mid-life cycle refresh, though doing so would have created a split experience for gamers. So the feature suite um, was held off for the next generation. Also, nobody would develop it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are some other small improvements over the DualShock 4. The next generation controller will use USB Type-C connector for charging and you can play through the cable as well. It has a larger capacity battery and haptic motors makes the new controller a little bit heavier than the DualShock 4. And Aoki, uh, but Aoki says it will still come in a little bit lighter than the current Xbox controller with the batteries in. So that's what they have to say about the controller. Uh, I wonder if it's going to look exactly the same as the DualShocks have always looked. I'm sure it'll look exactly the same as the DualShock 4. You know, just like they said, a little bit heavier. Hmm. Maybe even like slightly bigger because it's got to fit all the crap in. But I don't. I imagine it's not going to be dramatically different. There, There's going to be... Like, they already confirmed it was backwards compatible with PS4. So the controller can't be too different. Mm -hmm. I like... I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Microsoft guy now, I decided. <laughs> um... I mean, Sony's got the better exclusives, but yeah, as a console overall, I like the Xbox. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I mean when I say like as a console, it's a better console. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. You know how it's going to go. Of course, always wait and see before you start pre-ordering a system. We knew this was coming, but now yeah. we. This is the first time we have definitive proof that we're getting a next-gen console next year. Next year, and it has and what name it is. Yeah, yeah, and we we learned a little bit more about the controller, the SSD. Um, it's going to have a 4K Blu-ray player. So physical media isn't going anywhere. Right. So, yeah. um, so exciting times. But, yes. you know, we won't know anything until we actually see something. Correct. I think, so Sony wasn't at E3 this year. Yes. But they were at Comic-Con. Yes. They that was weird. Yeah. Why would they skip E3 and not, you know, but good for them though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to the consumer show. Screw E3. Yeah.